Hey everyone, here's a video about a snare drum that belonged to the great Cliff Lehman. And uh, before I get to it, I just want to say a quick thanks again for all the nice emails I've gotten. It's been really nice to talk to different people and nice to know that people are getting something from these videos. I'm certainly getting something from it. I've made some new friends and people have shared a lot of great information with me and I've learned a lot. People have shared rare recordings and photos and stories and it's been great to just talk about these drummers and their techniques with other people who get it and who are into it. So that's been really nice and I think I'd like to give a specific shout out right now in that regard to Paul in England and Bernard in Germany and Sonny here in the States. Thanks guys, it's been really nice. So uh, this drum it's a 5x14 Slingerland drum. I believe it dates to the late 70s. So this is not a drum that, let's say, Cliff Lehman was playing on those classic recordings from the 50s that I mentioned in some of the other videos. I'm not sure if he recorded with this at all, actually, or which recordings it's on. I know he had Slingerland specifically make him this drum, but I'm not sure how much he used it. However, it's just on its own, it's a great drum and an interesting and unique drum. And of course it has significance to me because it belonged to Cliff and because this was given to me by his wife, Reen Lehman, who I met through my great friend, Michael Steinman, the wonderful jazz writer and just all around good guy. And Michael arranged a get-together with the three of us. He drove me out to Mrs. Lehman's place in New Jersey. And we all spent the day together talking about Cliff. And she was wonderful and just shared a lot of stories with us. And at the end of the day, she gave me this drum, which was, of course, very unexpected and a very generous and touching gift, to say the least. Uh, can't even really put into words how nice that was but so I would like to definitely dedicate this video to Reen Lehman and Michael Steinman for making this possible and I would also recommend checking out Michael's blog he has a great jazz blog which I would just recommend in general but he also uh, had an entry where he talked about that day with Mrs. Lehman and documented some of the things that she told us about Cliff so I'll try to put a link to that in the description because I think you would definitely be into it. Certainly anyone who's interested enough to watch this will be interested in that because uh, she told us some great things about Cliff that uh, Michael wrote down. So uh, getting to the drum. This is a 5x14 Slingerland, which I mentioned. And as far as I can tell, this is more or less a model that they call the Spitfire. I'm by no means an expert on this stuff, but uh, the Spitfire snare drum was, I think, designed by Louis Belson, and I think it might have only been available in one year, 1979. Um, sort of the distinguishing characteristics of that drum were that it had 12 lugs and four vent holes. So if you compare that to, let's say, what Cliff was playing in the early 50s, of Slingerland wooden Radio King snare drum that had eight lugs and just one vent hole. Twelve lugs are pretty rare. Uh, eight has usually been the standard on a 14-inch snare drum. Some drums have ten. That's become more popular in recent years, but twelve is pretty rare, as are the four vent holes. This also has uh, what they call the TDR throw-off, which was a very nice, smooth throw-off that Slingerland made. And actually, speaking of that, an interesting thing, you can see here these bridges on the sides. This was a characteristic of all the old radio kings. They would have these bridges and these extended snares that attach to the bridges. So the snares would extend beyond the edge of the bottom drum head. And like I said, that was on all the Radio Kings, the Gene Krupa model Radio King, all of them had those bridges with the extended snares. What's interesting is a lot of the guys back in the day didn't like those when they take them off. Even Gene Krupa, you can see in all the photos of him, on his own Gene Krupa model Radio King snare drum, 
he would take the bridges off and he wouldn't use the extended snares, he would just use regular snares that he would put on with string. And likewise, you can see in photos that Sid Catlett did the same thing, Dave Tuff, Cozy Cole. Most of those guys, for whatever reason, they didn't like the bridges and the extended snares. So, um, I play both kinds of drums. I don't really have a preference, but those guys did, and then it's interesting that Cliff wanted, wanted it on there. Uh, Cliff Lehman, to me, he always sort of did his own thing with equipment. The stuff he used uh, was very individual and not like what other people were playing. This drum also has, where is it? It also has a tone control here, and that's another thing that a lot of uh, drummers would take off their drums. Gene Krupa definitely, you can see him in photos on all of his drums, he would always take the mufflers out and there would just be the holes there uh, where the muffler was. And I do that myself. Uh, one of my uh, greatest mentors, uh, Chuck Riggs, a great drummer, when I met him when I was 19, that was one of the things he taught me, just take those mufflers out. You know, he said, you don't use them, and they just rattle around, so take them out. So I generally do that, but of course I wouldn't tamper with this because it was Cliff's drum. But just interesting to note uh, that he apparently liked those extended snares and he wanted the muffler on there. Uh, because as I said, he specifically asked Slingerland to build him this, and what sets it apart from the regular Spitfire model, um, I believe that in general the Spitfires were deeper. This is five by 14. I think that they were five and a half or six and a half by 14. But what really makes this different, the Spitfire was available in wood or brass, but this one is steel. And Cliff specifically asked Slingerland to build him this one in steel instead of brass. And that's another, uh, what would seem like an unusual choice. Uh, usually brass would be the more sought after metal. So again, just an interesting thing, Cliff always doing something different. And uh, because of the shell and the 12 lugs, it's a pretty heavy drum. It's about 10 pounds. Uh, is heavy for a snare drum. And I also know that Cliff uh, liked the fact that it was heavy. He was very proud of that and thought that, that signified high quality. And certainly it is a high quality drum. And um, like I said, I don't know how much he used this or if he recorded with it, uh, but his snare drum sound in general, after those uh, some of those early mid 50s recordings where he's using Radio King, then sometime later on, maybe later on in the 50s, he started getting into thinner snare drums, piccolo snare drums. You can see him using a 4x14 a lot. And 4 inches uh, was a depth of a snare drum that he used a lot throughout the rest of his career. And he also got into using a smaller diameter. He would use a lot of 13-inch snare drums. And four inches by 13 inches. That was a size that he liked a lot. And in this photo here, you can see he's using a Ludwig snare drum. Cliff always played Slingerland, but he did have this Ludwig snare also. And this was, I think, a four or maybe even a three and a half by 13 inch snare drum, another uh, metal snare drum that he played a lot. So he was into those smaller snare drums. And I think if you play on a snare drum, that's uh, 13 or a four inch depth. Uh, it's a very dry, precise sound. And that's certainly what this drum is going for as well. And I'll make a separate video where I play it so you can hear it. Although it doesn't magically make one sound like Cliff Lehman, I have to say that. But another interesting thing, when you hear it, there's actually, uh, these are the, Slingerland heads that Cliff had on the drum. And there's actually a rip in the bottom head right here, sort of from one lug to the other there, sort of a big rip. But I've kept that on there just because these are the heads that Cliff used. But also because of the 12 lugs and they're so close together and the tension is distributed so evenly, this drum still is very responsive and sounds surprisingly good with a rip in the bottom head which normally I think would disable a drum to a much greater
greater degree. So there you go, Cliff Lehman's Slingerland snare drum, uh, just a great drum. Thank you again to Reen Lehman and Michael Steinman. Thanks to everybody for watching these. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything else you'd like to see. I have uh, some things in the works. Uh, I'm definitely gonna do a video about Buzzy Druton because he's another one of my favorites and someone who I feel isn't talked about enough. And he also was into piccolo snare drums for part of his career. And there's some interesting uh, information to share about that. So a few other things. Let me know if there's anything specific you'd like me to cover. And if I can, I will. And thanks a lot. I'll be back soon.